Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to make this real-time 3D website with no coding. And we're going to use Dora, a very cool web builder platform that I've just found out recently. So let's get into it. So Dora is a web builder platform that gives you the ability to build websites with no coding. So it's quite similar to other web builder tools like Webflow or Framers. But what makes it different is that they have some really cool features like the 3D features that can let you import any animated 3D models directly to your website. And another cool thing is that you can animate everything in your website using just keyframes and timelines. So I find those are pretty interesting. So now I'm going to give it a try. So to get started, you need to sign up and then you will get access to the platform. So here's what you see. So this is a project panel where all of my projects are here. So now I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to call it 3D Fish. All right, so here we are in the main Dora interface. So as you can see that the overall layout is pretty standard and similar to a lot of common tools nowadays like Figma so you can feel right at home so on the left panel we have the pages and the components and at the top here uh, they offer you a couple of tools where you can create a container or text or 3ds and here is a menu to switch to different canvas size like macbook pro 14 16 so i'm going to go with 16 because uh, this is where well, what i'm using right now and here is the timeline toggle where you can turn on and turn off the timeline panels and this is the save indicator to make sure that your progress has been saved and here is the preview button so you just click here to preview your progress and you can always restart to uh, refresh uh, when whatever you change uh, what you're doing on the main um, project file and here is a publish button so when you turn this on it will give you a uh, Dora domain where you can just demo your website and preview it as a real website and the right panel is the contextual menu where it will be contextual depends on what you are selecting and in the middle is the main canvas where we will work on so by default this one can be the home page so the first thing i want to do is just to show you right into how to import the 3d because that's the fun part so to import a animated 3d models let's click here and create a 3d widgets here we have a 3d widgets here so you can go to this menu and select fill space and it will automatically fill up the horizontal space so it will be really handy when it comes to responsive because it doesn't matter how wide your screen is it will always fill up the space and then we can click here to import the 3d models so currently those are only available for glt app and glb format so the perfect place to find those formats is to go to sketchfab.com and then search for the model so i'm going to search for a fish and I'm going to turn on downloadable and animate it and then I found this really cool fish right here so let's check it out so as you can see this fish is super cool this is really good so let's purchase this fish and actually I already purchased it so um, I'm just going to purchase and then from here I can download the file so uh, they give you a bunch of different options but we go into download the gltf format so this is what we have after you download and unzip the file so we have a lot of files here one gltf one bin file so the thing is that you cannot import this file into the 3d widgets because nothing's gonna happen the reason is that they need to work with these other files as well so what we need to do is to pack all of these files into one single glb format so all you have to do is just go to this website i put a link under the description and then drag everything into this square right here and what it does is it will pack everything and download this glb file so now we have this file here scene file so let's just rename it as mr fish and now let's go back to dora and then import mr fish to our scene all right here we go we have the fish here so it's looking pretty good so to see it better let me just change the background colors into blue 
just for now so we can see the fish a little bit better uh, so the thing is that if you notice that the fish is not moving so to fix that super easy just click on uh, Mr. Fish uh, dot GLB and then there's a toggle here so just turn on the toggles and then you see that is animating right now so it's looking pretty good and in this 3D scene you can select the 3D models and move it around and you can use the left mouse to rotate and use the right mouse to pan the camera and use the scroll to zoom in and zoom out so you can control how it look, what angle it's gonna be and you can also add keyframe to it next thing I wanted to do is to create some text layout so let's just click here to add some text Alright, so we have a text here and I want this to be always in the center of the page, doesn't matter how big your screen is, so super simple, just go to this constraint and then click here to center it, so now it's always being centered alive to, um, to the canvas, so it doesn't matter where you move, uh, it's always be in the center, so that is pretty cool. So now I'm going to add the rest of the text for the hero banners. And with this text, I would do the same uh, to a light center. And then I want this text to always follow the big ones to make sure that the spacing is always the same. So all I have to do is to click here and then connect it to the bottom of the big text. So now when you move the big text, it will always follow. So next, I'm going to work on the headers. So we need a button. So just click here to create a container. Um, and we can click here to change the color to white and change the radius to maybe give it 70 so we can have a peel like this and move it somewhere around here and then add some text and then I wanted this button to be responsive as well so what we do is to connect these dot together all of these dots will connect together so now when you transform the button the text will always be in the center so you can also use a container to create a simple icon like the hamburger menu so now let's import the dollar logo so I have a SVG here just simply drag it into the canvas and then we have the logo shows up here so let's move it to the right position Alright, so we have the headlines and the header here, so I wanted to extend this canvas to be longer so it will be scrollable. So all we need to do is to select this handle right here and then just drag it down so we can extend this longer. And once we extend this page longer, you see that this dash line over here that indicate the viewport. So I'm going to preview it and give it a try. So you see that when you scroll everything it just goes up uh, so I want this header to stay sticky at the top and, all, uh, and also be responsive as well as the 3D widgets. So what we need to do is to select the logo and then click on this point and then drag it to the viewport top and it will show you this menu so let's just select viewport top and also here on the left let's connect it to the left of the viewport. And we'll do the same for this. Connect this to the viewport and this also stay at viewport top. And also here. And for the CTA, I'm going to connect this to this and also the top also stay sticky to the viewport. Alright, so now give it a try. Okay, so now when we scroll, it will stay sticky and let me just demonstrate it on the real website to see how it's responsive so now when you change the size of the the browser it will just be perfectly responsive so now we would do the same for the 3d widgets so let's unlock it and then just drag it to the viewport and select viewport top now the 3D widgets will always stay on the screen. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is to finish the rest of the text layout. All right, so after I finish the layout, this is what we got. So we have the full page here, and this is how it looks like on the preview. So when you scroll, it's looking pretty good. So what, what I wanted to do here is to 
uh, spy it up a little bit by having these numbers being a little bit parallax uh, comparing to the headlights while scrolling so what we need to do is to go back here and then select these three numbers and then group it into one container and let's rename it to numbers and then let's make sure that this container is under the 3d witches because i want it to be behind the fish so to make it parallax we need to turn on this timeline uh, panel and the way that the timelines work is that if you move this pointer right here so you can see the viewport is moving right so it's indicate that the page is scrolling so what we need to do is just go back to zero and then select the uh, the numbers container here and then set a keyframe as zero and then move the pointers and you can see how it's reflecting you can zoom out here to see a bigger to see a bigger pictures and move it way down until this frame where the number is just out of the top of the viewport and maybe set the keyframe here and with this keyframe i'm going to move everything up a little bit so when you so when you move the pointer you see this kind of parallax is going on so it will be much clearer to see it in preview so let's take a look so now you see that the number is being parallax but the position is not correct so once you go back and then go inside the containers let's lock it so we don't mess with this so go inside the containers and then move every individual numbers uh, accordingly so you can see here to make sure that is correct and also move the number two down a little bit and do the same for the number one so this is what you're gonna see so let's give it the preview so now it's working perfectly so that's how you can create a parallax effect using the time life so uh, let's just unlock this 3d witches so i just noticed there's a cut uh, of the 3d witches here so let me just scale it down to fill up the whole viewport space okay so last thing i wanted to do is give it a nice animated background so super easy i already have this loop animated background in this so all we need to do is to drag it into the canvas and then we have the video here and let's move it way down the bottom of the list here so it will be underneath everything and then let's uh, click here to center it and then change this to field space and move it to the top like this so we need to create a keyframe for the video as well so for the zero let's set this video to be at the top position and then just move the whole pointer down right at when it's reached the end of the page and then move it to the bottom so now it will create this kind of animations to make sure that there's no empty space showing up so this is how the end result look like so overall i think everything's looking really good the 3d and the parallax is really cool so that's how i create a 3d website with dora in just a few simple steps so if you're interested in learning more about dora just follow the link under my description to learn about more in-depth tutorial as well as to join the community so this is the end of my tutorial today so i hope you find it helpful and i'll see you in the next one